Hey everybody, today I'm doing a Poppin' Cookin' Candy Kit. I haven't done one of these in a long time and I definitely want to do another one. I've had this one sitting around the house just waiting for me to put it together for a while and today we're finally going to do it. So the kit that I chose for today is the Tenoshi Sushi and there's egg, tuna, and salmon roe and of course this is a just add water and no bake candy kit. Even though I don't like real sushi, I think I'm gonna like the candy version. So let's open this up and uh, get started making this. We'll follow along with the directions and hopefully it won't be too difficult. The contents of the box include our tray, spoon, dropper, candy, and then six different color packets. an interesting, I guess, kind of candy-ish smell. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Am I supposed to peel this open like this? Well, I did. Here are the contents of our box. Here's a rice candy powder and some different color powders, I guess. We'll find out more about what those are. Uh, soy sauce candy powder, and our spoon, our dropper. Alrighty. Step one is to make some rice. Fill the oval depression one with water, then add powder from the blue packet. Stir until thick like cooked rice. That's about as fluffed up and um, cohesive as I can get it. It smells like mm, bubble gum or maybe ramen -a soda. It smells good. Our directions don't say to take that rice out, so I'm gonna leave it in our container for now and move on to step two. And then if I need to take it out at any point, I will. Step two, make omelet. Add water up to the line on the side in the spiral section, then add powder from the yellow packet. Mix, spread, and flatten. Wait for three minutes until firm. This is our spiral section and this is considered the wavy section, so I don't wanna get those too confused. So this omelet part has been firming for about two minutes. It says to let it firm for three minutes, but you know, I'm not moving it out of our little tray anyway. So um, we're gonna keep moving on and just let it sit there and just keep firming up. Step three is make tuna. Add water up to the line on the side in the wavy section, then add powder from the red packet. Mix, spread, and flatten. Wait for three minutes until firm. While that red tuna is firming up for a couple of minutes, we're gonna keep going on to step four. Step four says make dried seaweed. Spread out the black candy to match shape and size of the packing pouch. Okay, it's taken me a second to look at everything and try and understand what they're saying. I think this is what they mean for the black candy that's going to become our seaweed. This rectangle here, so uh, that's where I will open this and spread this. This candy is pretty firm, so I am going to just kind of smoosh it around in my hand a little bit um, to try and warm it up in, in the hopes that it then spreads easier, but ooh, so far it's kind of tough. Uh-oh, it's breaking a little bit. Maybe I'm being too tough, but I really don't know how else to get it to spread out. Uh-oh. This did not work. This black candy did not work. It keeps falling apart. My fingers are turning black. My rolling pin is turning black. And I cannot get this to even stay in one piece and to stop breaking up. So I'm gonna leave this black candy alone and know that 
what I need that for, like that piece is probably not gonna work out because this is ridiculous and impossible and it's so dry and hard that I don't see how you put it together without breaking. So I'm gonna put this over here. All right, we're gonna move on. That just looks terrible. Look at it, it's, I, I put it down and it broke, so I can't even, okay. Moving on, let's look at step five, which says make salmon roe. Add water up to lines on sides and sections A and B. Add powder from the green packet to section A, add powder from orange packet to section B. Mix well, use dropper to slowly add mixture B to mixture A. Be careful not to mix liquids together. This is strange, but I think I'm doing it right because we're supposed to be making the salmon roe just one drop at a time. That looks pretty good so far. I don't know how much to do. Um, based on the picture on the box, it looks like we need a lot, but I'm trying not to go too quickly. Before I would have said that uh, mixing up the rice was my favorite part of this kit, because I really did like fluffing that up. But now there is something so like strange and relaxing about dropping the little red drops in here and watching them form little balls of salmon roe. Uh, yeah, this is my favorite part of the whole kit. It's weird and relaxing. So now that we're done with the top half of our directions, we're gonna move on to the bottom. It says how to make omelet sushi and tuna sushi. So really we're ready for assembly now. The first thing we need to do is form a rice ball. This is the example of the one they gave us. It looks a little bit square. So I'm gonna try my best to make that. I'm supposed to make three, not two. Okay, gotta start over. They're not clear with that on the directions. Like it doesn't say, you know, form a rice ball and then break it up into three. It just says form a rice ball and then later again, form a rice ball. So that's a little confusing. And there's number three. Well, they're not perfectly even, but that's okay. See, it says like form a rice ball and then you need two and then form another rice ball. So if you just break it in half, for these two, you're not gonna have any left for the salmon roe sushi. So uh, yeah, just trying to figure that out. It's a good idea to read these directions a little bit ahead and uh, not just do every single step as you go, kind of know what's coming. So anyway, now we're going to cut the omelet and the tuna in half, then flip the halves over and put on the rice balls. So we're gonna work on our assembly and I just feel bad that this candy part is here because it's so ugly. So uh, let's take our little scooper and we're going to cut our omelet in half and we're going to cut our tuna in half. Okay, and we're gonna try and take them out without, uh, hopefully without ruining them. Okay, omelet, I'm going to put on this one and I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, hey, there we go. It's on, it's not very sturdy on there. My rice ball is a little small, but it is on. That seems like it's gonna tip. Oh, there it goes. It's gonna tip any second. Okay, please just stand long enough for this video. Now let's get half of our tuna. There's a dog barking like crazy outside. Hopefully it's not hearable. Hopefully you can't hear that in the video. Okay, and we're gonna do it like this, maybe. Maybe this is easier, and flip. Oh, it tipped over. Okay. There's our tuna. You can see the waves there, the wavy pattern. Now we're gonna make our salmon roe sushi. So we take our last rice ball, we wrap it in the dried seaweed, and then we put the salmon roe on it. How do I get the salmon roe 
out of the water to put on there. Hmm. Okay, well this is a colossal failure because obviously there's no way I can get this candy wrapped around. None, none, no way, this is not gonna happen. This is just no good. I did terrible on this one. There, I feel like it needs a real prop up. Don't fall, don't fall. Okay, that worked. Okay, so I'm trying to get creative and use our dropper to gently pick up a little red ball and then put it on top of our sushi. I'm gonna call it a day on adding any more little um, salmon roe because as I'm dropping the little red balls, I'm like a little bit of water comes out of the dropper. So this is probably going to be a soggy mess. We're almost done, but we've got one step left. So I'm gonna scooch this out of the way and bring back our box. And now we are going to make the soy sauce. We're supposed to fill our dropper half full of water and add it to section one. Add the powder from the brown packet and mix well. Enjoy dipping sushi in soy sauce. Alrighty, everything is done. Um, I will, I try to put everything on a plate to make it look a little bit nicer and we will taste test this in a minute. This is not one of my best kits. I liked making it just fine and nothing was better than making those little balls. Um, but just in terms of how it turned out, I cannot get this one to stand up because I don't know how to shape the rice ball well. So it's got this little support uh, toothpick and then yeah, as, as I've said, I'm sure a couple times that candy just, forget it, just awful. Um, but this was really fun and everything's other than that icky black candy, everything looks pretty good. And the tuna sushi also, that came out totally fine. And I think that the um, soy sauce, you know, that wasn't difficult. So that came out fine as well. So let's taste everything. I think that this is like soda. Yeah, that's what it's, or no, is it grape? Oh, I can't tell, maybe it's grape soda. First, I'm going to try the tuna sushi. I don't know if I should bite it or just eat the whole thing. Who am I saving this for? I'm just gonna eat the whole thing. I like that. And I think that might be um, like the ramen, the soda flavored, I'm not sure, but I think so. And then whatever the flavor of that tuna was, was really good, so I like that one. Um, Okay, I'm not gonna even try and eat any of our black candy. So I'm just gonna have this rice ball with the salmon roll on top next. Those are kind of funny, but but I can't tell what flavor they are. Yeah, I mean, they're good. I just I just don't know if that um, the little salmon rolls have any kind of flavor or not. And so now let's try our soy sauce while we have our last piece of sushi, which is the rice ball with the omelet on top. So I'm gonna dip that really well into our soy sauce. That one's pretty good too. I mean, of course the rice is consistent. So the difference is really just gonna be in the little extras that are on top. Um, I don't really think we needed the soy sauce at all. Oh, grape and soda flavors. It says grape and soda flavors. Okay, so I, was, I wasn't wrong when I was um, smelling and kind of tasting soda and then a little bit of grape. Was everything Grape and soda though, like even our omelet and even our tuna, it's kind of hard to tell just because everything, you know, is sweet and candy-ish. So um, overall, I'd say that this was a good tasting kit and I am certainly going to finish the last little bit of the omelet and tuna that are in our box here. Otherwise, I enjoyed putting together this pop and cook in kit. If you have been trying any of these kits, please let me know which ones you like or which ones I should try next. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.